Hello. Uh, a few people have asked me if I could do a video showing the railway from a uh, distance so you could see how it was all laid out and how it all works and just explain a few things. So here I am. So this is the layout. This is Lapford Station, as you can see. And what I'll do is I'll zoom in on a few points of interest. So starting from what is effectively the Barnstable end of the layout, the bridge here is the bridge that takes a lane in real life to a place called Nimit Rowland. And it's a five arch bridge with the railway very close to the river, which I've tried to model. In reality, it's probably about two miles at least north of the station, but it made a good scenic break. So that was why I incorporated it. Moving further along is the small New Age Travellers site. The farmer doesn't seem too pleased to have them on his land. And you'll see there's various things going on. There's a bus, there's a decrepit old bungalow, oh, there's a chap having a lie down on a sofa. I think basically the battle of the bean field was too much for them, so they decided to uh, buy a house. Hopefully they'll do something with the washing machines and things in the yard there. And then moving back is the ground frame for the yard, which operates the various points. Well, in, in reality, this operates the various points, but there you go. And then there's the warehouses, which are a very well-known feature of the site and are still there. The two on the right are owned now by Rose's Removals, a local removal company. And then the large building here is the old Ambrosia Creamery building, which in the period I'm covering here, which is around 1987, was... Uh, a fertilizer depot amongst other things and then the fertilizer traffic was taken out by the poly bulk you can see there and the um, log wagons which have just been loaded and are probably about to be picked up a large heap of sand dumped on top of the railway line that used to reach the loading platform was a feature in the late 80s, mid to late 80s for some reason. That seems to be the digger driver having a wee. There's the way bridge with the forklift truck and the gaffer keeping an eye on things. Opposite the warehouses is the station building at Lapford and the three arch skew bridge which carries the A377 from Exeter to Barnstable. Uh, the station site hasn't changed an awful lot since 1987. The yard still had sidings until around 2009, although the last traffic to use it was in about 1994. But the warehouses are all still there in the station building. Following the A377, we passed the pub which I couldn't really find much information about, to be honest. It is still there. The building itself is derelict, but there's very few photos in existence of it open. So I've done my best with that. There's the garage, which at the time was a BP garage and the road disappearing off to the distance. Moving up to the other end of the layout, the railway crosses what is known as the Lapford Tor, crosses it once and then the river meanders across the field and then it crosses it again just before the railway disappears into the other scenic break which is a bridge at the far end which are disguised with trees. And then this is the view of the small lane that runs along 
next to the scenic break at the Exeter end of the layout. So at the Exeter end of the layout, you can see the railway disappears through the back scene and also so does the road and that's to give it a bit of 3D. And the railway curves around the back into the fiddle yard where there's two lines heading towards Barnstable and four towards Exeter. And then at the Barnstable end of the railway, the railway disappears through the back scene again and onto another section of layout, which is my version of Eggersford Station. The reason that's there is originally I planned to move the railway out into a shed in the garden, which I haven't got round to, um, but I actually built the buildings and thought it seemed a shame not to use them. So it's not quite the same as the real Eggersford because the track curves to the right rather than the left, but you know, the essence of it is there and it adds a bit of extra dimension to the railway having two stations. I can basically operate Eggersford and the Fiddle Yard from one side of the railway and then I can operate Blackford from the other side of the railway but I can also sneakily poke my head over the top and watch trains going through Blackford when I'm on the Fiddle Yard side. So hopefully that's explained how everything's laid out and what I'm going to do now is run a few classic services from the 1980s period to give a bit of understanding of what kind of traffic there was on the line in those days. Also, hopefully it'll give me a break from listening to the sound of my own voice. So here goes. So first up, we've got a 33 on a mixed passenger and parcel service from Barnstable to Exeter and then probably on to Paddington. Most local hauled services on the line in those days were 33s and 31s because anything much heavier than that was banned until the line was upgraded a bit later on in the 90s. It would have been a very early departure, probably about 4.40 in the morning. So the station lights are on and everything's very quiet. This train would have gone straight through that for the first time of day. So dawn's broken and the first train of the day is a 108 and a bubble car lash up on its way to Barnstable. The next train through is a class 31 on a summer Saturday service to Barnstable, which would run all day on a summer Saturday, up and down. Usually five or six coaches, plenty of room for the buckets and spades. Straight through Lapford on its way north.
and I'm running into Aegis for to collect the token and pass the returning DMU going the other way. Hope he was quick with the token then because that was going quite fast. The DMU now has the road to head towards Exeter. at Lapford, it's on its way back to Exeter. We're going to skip forward a bit now to a Monday and an early-ish freight that is heading towards Lapford to pick up a few wagons and then head on towards Barnstable. Going to take the goods loop. It's going to pull right through and reverse onto the wagons in the background. So now coupled up, it's going to head up north to Barnstable, where at the time, in the 80s, there was a fairly large yard which handled cement, fertiliser and various other things. And this will go to Barnstable, run round, probably pick up some more wagons and then head back to Exeter Riverside. Here it is passing the early morning DMU, going back to Exeter, which today has got a trailing load of a van on the back. So the last thing I'm going to run today is the old depot favourite of Eastleigh, Eastleigh itself. And that's on a train recovery and various bits of scrap that have been left lying around after the points have been removed in the yard. So there you go, I think that's probably it. Like I say, if there's any questions, feel free to ask. Um, if you're still with me after listening to me drone on for this long, thank you very much, I appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed it and um, see you again, bye.